Hi everyone, my name is Hunter Bradley and this is Amelia Speech. We're the directors of Springsteen Gallery in Baltimore, Maryland. We're really excited to be part of FAIR. Also, thanks to all of you for dropping into our studio visit with Sydney Shen. Sydney is based in New York and has had solo exhibitions at Sophie Tuffiner, the New Museum, Springsteen, Interstate Projects, and Mattel. Forthcoming solo exhibitions include Vacancy Gallery, Shanghai, and the Queens Museum as part of the Jerome Foundation Queens Museum Emerging Artists Fellowship. Sydney is one of our favorite artists working today. Um, we've worked with her on four exhibitions at the gallery, including two international presentations and one not very timely solo show for Thieves Vinegar. It's eerie to look back on that show now and see it continue to develop its meaning and relevance years later. And now without further delay, we're gonna hand it over to Sid. Hi Sid. Oh, hi, Hunter and Amelia. Um, yeah, thanks so much for uh, inviting me to, to chat with you guys. So I guess usually around this time on a Sunday, I would be working at my studio in um, downtown Manhattan, um, super close to One World Trade, um, because I'm an artist in residence at the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council uh, workspace program. Um, but right now, um, I'm at home. Uh, as I have been for the past, uh, I guess, since, since late March, and I am icing a cake. Um, <laughs> it is a uh, citrus cardamom cake with mascarpone uh, icing, but I started icing it when it was hot, so a lot of the icing has melted, because I'm really impatient. But I al also am working on things other than icing cake, and I will share those things with you today. So, decay, uh, drainage, the abscess, the carbuncle, um, and other expressions of the macabre and abject are themes in my work. So, uh, this is an image from Four Thieves Vinegar, uh, which was my solo exhibition with you guys that happened back in 2018. And it was an installation of um, sculptural interpretations of folk play cures. And when I was working on the show, I wasn't just thinking about, but was also experiencing kind of the uh, desperation of how late medieval renegade wellness remedies parallel the emergency of the U.S. healthcare crisis today. Lacking adequate access to healthcare, uh, people have no choice but to take fate into their own hands. Yeah, this exhibition had so many experiential layers to it, um, and even this like really pungent scent that um, hits you when you walk when you walk through the door um, kind of like this vinegar and garlic and lavender type scent can you talk a little bit more about some of the sculptures hanging on the, the rail that went through the space yeah so the flask waters um, I always think of them as um, for flagellants to use on both their bodies as well as the flies that would anticipate their corpses and I designed the swatting mesh with images and text inspired by the early Renaissance Italian composer Carlo Gesualdo, who was kind of an evil prince that made very angsty music. And I reference him because he believed he was tortured by demons and that the only relief from this was uh, for the demons to be beaten out of him. And so now scholars think that these sort of idiosyncratic exorcisms um, were in a practical sense, uh, also physical therapy for a very corporeal condition, which was acute constipation. So yeah, like the flagellants, he sort of conflated his um, health conditions with a uh, spiritual ineptitude. It feels like a kind of like extreme form of self-care. I remember the chairs sort of implying that you could climb through the manhole cover or escape the gallery into another place. Can you talk a little bit more about the sort of lore behind the, the ladders and the, the manhole cover? And so one of the folk play cures that I had encountered was a suggestion to actually sit in the sewers, <laughs> which just sounds obviously totally absurd. Um, so that's why I kind of had these chairs hung upside down to suggest a descent and then also like in close proximity to the manhole cover uh, sculpture that was on the ground. Um, so in a way, I think like being an, uh, an artist to design effectively for an audience is almost kind of like a dungeon master uh, in like D&D &D or something. 
um, where you want to provide like just enough context for then a player or a viewer to act and feel like to act with their own agency. Other sort of recent projects, um, I showed my first institutional project at the New Museum. Uh, it was a kinetic installation called Onion Master. And for this piece, I turned a set of storefront windows facing Bowery into a giant arcade claw machine with onions and dancing bobblehead toys as the prize. Um, why, like, what, what is it about the onion? Um, I think there's something about the onion that is, like, very tragicomic. There's something humble about an onion, yet it's so powerful that it can literally make you cry when you cut it open. It has a very cute and sinister feel, and so does, uh, so, so do these sculptures, <laughs> which were uh, at my other show that happened around the same time as Onion Master last year, called Every Good Boy Does Fine. And this happened at Sophie Tapiner Gallery in Vienna. And also, um, I'm also showing a work with Sophie at, at this online fair. So shout out to Sophie. <laughs> and so the sculptures in this exhibition were mostly made of bound text engraved on brass plaques, dried corn, antique children's toilets, and objects related to animal bodies. <laughs> oh, this is a behind the scenes clip. <laughs> so like toilets or corn or a taxidermy form for a young bear or even a rabbit skeleton, I think of found text as a ready-made. So um, I'm interested in how labels are meant to define and locate. So in a lot of my work, I use systems of language that are usually meant to clarify to instead destabilize meaning. Can you talk more about those like segmented animal forms? Like what's going, what's going on with those? All the animals represented are fragmented in some way because I was thinking about that sort of territory between cuteness and violence and that like when you evoke cuteness you also have to evoke violence. In, in these works uh, the pony toilet is staring into the hole of this device on the right that is used in research labs to restrain rabbits for experimentation and those sculptures are the last things you see before uh, going into the next room with the rabbit skeleton. So I was interested in sort of that like confrontation. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're currently working on? I'm currently working toward an exhibition at the Queens Museum that will happen next year as the culmination of my Jerome Foundation Queens Museum Emerging Artist Fellowship and I'm also working on new sculptures for my first solo exhibition with Gallery Vacancy in Shanghai. And um, I guess given the kind of uncertainty of the present and near future, uh, I don't want to say too much but but I can say that these exhibitions will be related and I'll be working at a scale that I haven't worked at before. See, so yeah, I've been thinking about like the photographic process of enlargement as a conceptual framework for um, installations of monumental sculptures. And like enlarging portions of an image is usually done to gain more clarity about what is being depicted. So um, I kind of want to uh, I'm curious about how I can use enlargement to instead like obscure the truth and I'm thinking about and around the historical use of photographic technology to enforce hegemonic fiction and genuine fact and the relationship to contemporary narrative forms that rely on the photograph as a signifier of truth. So for an example, um, this uh, I found this supercut on YouTube of just the zoom, computer zoom enhance enlarge trope um, that like you encounter so often and is so familiar in um, you know, science fiction and also like investigative uh, crime dramas. Um, so that's one form uh, in addition to also like found footage horror movies and even fake news. I can't wait to see how this manifests into your, your next exhibitions and bodies of work. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And as always, considering like your perception is like so acute and discerning and then like represented to the audience in such an inventive way. Um, um, and thank you so much for chatting with us um, in the studio visit, this virtual visit. Um, and oh my God, the cake is. Can <laughs> <laughs> you share that through here? Can, can you? Oh, just... yeah. So this is now a mukbang uh, presentation where I will proceed to eat this whole cake uh, over the next uh, 10 minutes. Um, okay. <laughs>
Cool. Well, for everyone still watching, um, you can find Sydney's work at Fair with Springsteen and Sophie Tapliner. And yeah, bye. Thank you guys. Bye. <laughs>